back on the field again today and you know after yesterday's kind of abbreviated walk through short light practice you know we were able to see a full day of action and Jordan Love showed out among others of course but we'll get into all that shortly but first let's start off with a few roster moves so as everybody's probably aware by now Jonathan Ford was released on his birthday not a great look but you know we ended up filling that spot with a center, James Empey, who we claimed off the Titans waiver wire. And then as we look at the starters, uh, at least in the team drills, mostly the same, but a few little things here. So initially it was Musgrave and DeGuara were on the field at the same time. Today we saw Musgrave and Kraft on the field together as we continued to see a good amount of 12 personnel packages used. But one of the biggest takeaways on offense was the fact that Keyshawn Nixon, seen here, did individual drills as a receiver. It's something that Matt LaFleur had discussed a little bit, stating that he wanted Nixon to focus on his duties in the slot to earn that job first, but then they would consider it after that. Maybe this is an indication of LaFleur and the staff's approval of his performance in the slot. Either way, finding a way to get the ball into Keyshawn Nixon's hands is probably a net positive for the Packers. As is likely the case with this guy, Jaden Reed, who had a great day yesterday and followed it up with a solid performance today as well. Look to see him used in a variety of different ways, both out wide in the slot and on sweeps and things like that also. The reps are going to be tough to come by sometimes though, because this receiver room has a lot of guys, including Samori Toure, who's in a tight battle with Jaden Reed for playing time as well. We saw more of Toure today in the highlights, but from Andy Herman's perspective, he's had an outstanding camp overall so far. He's another guy that I think is building strong chemistry with Jordan Love, just as Romeo Dobbs has as well. You could see some of the fluidity that Dobbs and Reed had in this kind of stop-go-stop -stop route, showing just how athletic they are and quick they are getting in and out of their breaks. Christian Watson had a pretty decent day too, though it sounds a little bit like some of the chemistry issues are starting to rise up between him and Love. Just sometimes not being on the same page and having to work through timing issues, which partly is it's early in camp, and secondly is that Christian Watson has more speed than any of the other receivers we have, bar none. And then here we have Malik Heath catching a slant and diving through some pads for the goal line. Heath is a guy that even Matt LaFleur has recently spoken out about how excited he is to see more of Heath this preseason. The catch of the day, though, went to the newest receiver on the Packers receiving core, Cody Crest, who made this outstanding one-handed grab, extending his stride and arms as far as he could. Crest met Green Bay's usual measurables, having an elite speed score, as well as great explosiveness and agility. I'd like to take a moment and ask, if you're enjoying this video, please click like down below. It helps a lot with the algorithm, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more Packers practice highlights. At tight end, Tucker Kraft found himself in with the ones for periods today, taking over a spot that Josiah DeGuara had previously been starting really the first play of drives alongside Luke Musgrave on. Speaking of Luke Musgrave, he continues to turn heads. Just the fluidity that he moves with just looks different than a standard tight end. And he shows off some of his ball skills in this catch here, where the ball is on him immediately out of his break. Musgrave even flashed something a little bit new as a blocker in team drills today. On one play, he got pretty physical against Kenny Clark, which helped spring Aaron Jones' run. I feel like a broken record even saying it, but if he can manage to be an even decent blocker, he's going to be just on the field so much this year, and he's going to make a huge impact on this offense. And here you see him and Tucker Craft on a combo block, a blocking technique that was new to Tucker Craft. Transitioning a bit more into the run game, here we see Josiah DeGuara working out of the backfield on a block coming off the edge to catch the linebacker at the second level. Hank the Tank Pearson also was doing this drill. Our dynamic backfield was working on some pass pro where you see Aaron Jones tossing a medicine ball at AJ Dillon who pops it real quick and sends it back to Jones. Working on some heavy hands really. And if his upper body has even remotely the power that his lower body has, he'll hold up just fine in pass pro. The mayor of Door County is heading into a contract year and looks to make sure that the Packers won't think twice about keeping him on the 2024 roster. 
but in reality, the backfield of both Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon could be seeing limited time past this season, as Aaron Jones is even on a two-year deal right now as well. We didn't see specifically a lot of highlights of just Jordan Love today, but from all accounts, it was his best practice of camp so far. In team, he went 16 for 22. He was throwing a tight spiral. He was throwing in rhythm. He was making plays outside of the pocket. I mean, he had good pocket presence, stepping up when he needed to or getting out of the pocket to avoid the rush. And, you know, he's just getting better day over day. On the defensive side of the ball, the leaders continue to set the pace. Whether that's Kenny Clark going 100% rep after rep for the guys up front, or if it's Jair Alexander setting the tone for that defensive backfield. As is customary, the defense has held its own against the offense early in camp. Another guy that found himself some reps with the first teamers was Lucas Van Ness. He got first team reps alongside Preston Smith in the two minute drill. Primarily Justin Hollins and Enig Bari have been getting those reps beforehand. And Hercules made the most of the opportunity. Specifically on one play, tossing Josiah DeGuara four yards back, blowing up the play in the backfield. Andy Herman described the early whistle as protecting Jordan Love from the wrath of an angry god. Seems pretty fitting. At safety though, we saw things shake up a little bit. You see here Tarvarius Moore, who actually got some first team reps alongside Darnell Savage. Moore at the safety position was that Innis Gaines was seen doing more individual drills with the cornerbacks, possibly freeing up another spot in that battle. Savage is also in a contract year, and he looks to bounce back from his performance last year. Here we see Keyshawn Nixon back on the defensive side, breaking out of his back pedal and batting away a ball. Again, I'm wondering if his presence in offensive individual drills is an indication of his performance at slot. And then here I've got a clip from Friday's practice actually, but it was a find the ball drill where you see some of the linebackers and defensive ends breaking into some pads to try to find that ball in case of a fumble. Oh, and would you look at that, Keyshawn Nixon also back returning punts, as if we haven't seen him everywhere else on the field already today. At one point it did look like he went down after a punt return rep. It wasn't exactly clear whether he was hit or if it was just something else, but he ended up being down for a little while and ended up walking off on his own power after. I'm sure we'll hear more about his status moving into next week. Also on special teams, we saw Daniel Wheeling get the opportunity to punt today, and he had 12 punts which averaged 52 yards with a 4.56 second hang time average per Rob Domofsky. So we got into a bit of the competitive period and two minute uh, sessions with uh, you know 11 on 11 and then some seven on seven. We saw a good bit out of love. Um, for instance, one time there was a pass, he came off of a play action looking for Christian Watson and put the ball only where Watson was gonna be able to get it. And Watson made a sliding catch. Also, he was targeting Romeo Dobbs on a lot of in-breaking routes. And he was very decisive when he was targeting Dobbs in those situations. On one play also, Jordan Love was targeting Jaden Reed, who had beat Keyshawn Nixon on a corner route. And just, he delivered a perfect strike to Reed on that play. There was some pressure coming off the left-hand side, and Nyman was in at left tackle at that point, as Bakhtiari had kind of uh, taken himself out of the play for a little bit, which we'll get to more on that in a second. Um, but really, Nyman was able to hold his own and bear down to give Love just enough time to get that ball off. As we got into some of the two-minute drill stuff, we saw uh, one series where, where Dylan had a nice run up the left-hand side, which they got the ball um, down to about six seconds left. They targeted uh, Luke Musgrave on that one, who was able to complete it and got pushed out of bounds. So at that point, there was two seconds left, and they were able to score on that two-minute drive with a Anders Carlson field goal. Anders Carlson, on the other hand, was a little bit rough on the day. Ultimately, I believe it was two of seven is what was reported on, on kicks. There was one series of three kicks where he was 0 for 3, and uh, really the next one he was only 1 for 3, and that seventh kick came in this particular drive that he ended up making that, uh, that score to finish out that two-minute drill. Um, when it came down to the second and third team guys, the third team was led by Alex Magoo today. And all we really heard too much about that was that, you know, one of the initial plays, he hit a nice quick screen to Malik Heath who, you know, did a little bit with it. But that was about it. Some of the other, you know, draft picks that we kind of saw were Lou Nichols had a nice day running the ball. He looked pretty smooth, um, good vision, and had a little bit of burst in there as well. So that's the first we've really heard much about Lou Nichols this training camp so far. 
but uh, we'll see what that kind of changes when the pads come on as he's a little bit of a f more physical back than he is like a shifty scat kind of guy like a Tyler Goodson or an Aaron Jones. Isn't to say that Aaron Jones isn't physical. Don't get me wrong. That dude is a beast. And then when Sean Clifford got his chance, he ended up buying some time, getting outside of the pocket, and uh, he found Jadakus Bonds along the sideline. Uh, next play, he tried for a little bit of a tight window throw, and uh, he was targeting Deuce Watts, but it ended up being broken up by Shamar John Charles. And then his last pass rep was a batted ball um, by Keandre Thomas, who was in coverage as well. So no completions to report of at that time for Sean Clifford. And here we've got our one 11 on 11 rep that we're able to see today. And this was a, a beautiful shot down the left sideline targeting Samori Toure, where Love just puts it in a perfect spot between the cornerback and the safety. Ultimately, when it came down to the competitive session, Jordan Love led the offense extremely well today. But the second and third team guys didn't fare as well. And ultimately, the defense ended up being the winning unit again, which led to more up downs for the offense. That's pretty standard, as I think I mentioned earlier, you know, in camp this early, we're still working through timing with guys. We're working on some of those younger guys really learning some of the offense better as they've installed it all, but they haven't repped it a whole lot. So we're looking at some of those things and the defense is a little bit more of a unit kind of. Thing. We did see a few guys get a little bumps and bruises throughout the training, uh, throughout the practice today rather. And some of that was like, Tucker Craft ended up going out briefly after he caught a knee to the thigh, which, you know, he ended up coming back out. He had some ice on it. I'm sure we'll we'll see how impactful that is for the next couple days of camp. Um, another one we saw was Nixon, as I mentioned, who went down after that punt return rep. Um, Dontavian Wicks was back out there today, not practicing, but he was just physically there, still dealing with that concussion, but rode a bike over um, in the dream drive and then uh, was observing practice from the sidelines. And as I mentioned earlier, David Bakhtiari took himself out, essentially. Nobody was able to see that there was any trainers involved, but he's kind of that veteran level of he knows what he needs to do. And if he needed to, to take, you know, a little, a little break and sit one out for a few reps, you know, that's, you know, honor system on him to take care of himself. And they trust him with that. Um, all in all, though, nothing serious, which is, you know, grateful, knock on wood. Hopefully we keep that up throughout camp. And, uh, you know, we'll be back on Monday with pads. No practice on Sunday for the Packers, but pads are on. So look for, you know, defensive line reps, offensive line reps, those linebackers getting into the mix and shaking things up. And those running backs really kind of bringing some of that, that pop to the practice. Uh, look forward to some thud reps in the next coming uh, practices. And then family night is Friday. So that means we're about a week and a half away from a preseason game. And I cannot wait to see these guys in action against another team.